Hello, my dear friend. How are you? Good I'm to good see you. Time, good to good to see you again for for the third uh, webinar uh, about uh, the book. So so far we we discussed SIDA. We also discussed the Ambev case uh, during the COVID. You know, and today we we will have a very informal chat with two. Uh, great friends uh, uh, of us, uh, the founder and, and chair of the PMO Global Alliance, Américo Pinto, a great friend from, from Brazil, and Edita, uh, you need just to correct me if I'm saying wrong, que me if I'm, uh, yeah, you, she will correct me when she's live, uh, from uh, uh, the Project Management United that promotes the Bridge Conference uh, in the Baltics that uh, I had the pleasure to speak uh, last year, and it was really uh, fantastic. So I want to invite both uh, to join us uh, on this stream. So Americo and Edita, welcome. Hello. Okay, welcome. Uh, what wonderful seeing you and seeing uh, uh, friends here and having the chance to to talk to to you uh, and having the chance to talk to you about uh, about the case and what you did on the book and we decided to bring uh, to bring you, you you two at the same moment because we, we uh, the PMO Global Alliance and the Project Management United you you bring to us a, a view of uh, those who are promoting really project management uh, uh, in in their community in their society so i want to uh, start by inviting you and i will start with edita just to introduce yourself and and your role and and what is project management united and and the bridge conference and then after that americo talking a little bit more for us about the pmo global alliance edita <laughs> Hello everyone, and uh, first of all, thank you, dear Ricardo, Dr. L, and my great friend, uh, Americo. It's really such a pleasure to be here and such a warm welcome. I couldn't miss a chance. And you know, I guess it's a unique opportunity for all of us to be connected in one place. It's really first time and uh, uh, truly amazing timing. So, um, First of all, I also would like to congratulate with the book and I, I really love your idea to have this like small book, uh, book club and every time uh, to discuss different perspectives, connect with uh, different uh, uh, subject matter experts and professionals. So I think it's, it's really great steps to step towards tomorrow. Talking about myself, uh, Edita Kemsuraite, I am co-founder um, uh, of Project Management United and I am also a head of content uh, uh, of International Bridge Conference, uh, uh, connecting uh, project management professionals, uh, program managers and PMOs. So uh, talking about my company, um, Project Management United uh, is a really small organization established by myself self and uh, my wonderful partner, Inga Abringene. And we started our journey just last year between the two of the lockdowns when pandemics just started. So we really uh, value all, uh, all friends uh, and uh, partners who supported us in, in this uh, amazing journey. Uh, and um, actually, Project Management United is driven by our passion for projects and uh, our idea to connect different organizations, uh, different uh, certificates uh, providers, uh, project management uh, education providers into this amazing United network and discuss about our profession, enhance our profession and level it up by 
bringing global thinkers like you, dear Ricardo, Dr. L, uh, to discuss about important uh, items and uh, and to help us uh, uh, to to come up on some social values and uh, social leadership perspectives. So, so far, uh, we are really glad about this uh, journey and looking forward, forward uh, to talk about article. Uh, yeah, and, and, and just by, uh, before we move to America, I just want to tell you uh, that your piece on the book was one of, uh, I would say, the most inspiring for me, because when you invited me last year to speak uh, at the conference, uh, I, I was a very... Uh, keen to support and find, you know, we need to find ways we are in COVID. And I, I attended virtually and it was really a pleasure. And, and your words about the, the, the future and how the future will shape uh, uh, were just incredible. And we'll talk more about that very soon. Okay. Now, Americo, your turn, okay. my friend. All right. So, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation to be here with you today. Uh, Ricardo, all, Dr. Kessner, actually, it's an honor for me to collaborate with your fantastic book. So thank you very much for this great opportunity. I'm, I'm happy to see Edita again, right? We will be together in, in 10 days, <laughs> so in, in Lithuania. So it's a great pleasure to be with you here today. So let, let, let me try to introduce myself very quickly. Uh, actually, I've been working uh, in the project management field for 25 years. Uh, I've, I, I've already performed many different roles, uh, project manager, executive, consultant, professor in many different organizations. I, 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 I founded my own companies uh, in the past, but in the last five years, six years, I'm leading uh, something very different. I've decided to, to leave my, my companies, to so, sell my company, and actually I founded the PMO Global Alliance that is, is more than an association of PMO people. Actually, it's a community. And when I say community, it means that there is a very interesting vision of future about what a community is. So today, uh, we, we have been growing very fast, faster than I could imagine. So after six years, we have around 15,000 members in 126 countries, very big projects. Uh, in many different areas, research, uh, events, uh, awards, and and I try to manage all of this. It's not easy because uh, it's a lot of things, a lot of people, but, but I'm really happy because when we talk about transformation, future, and PMOs, all these things can be connected, and with the support of all these great people, we can make big changes, you know, and, and generate value for everyone, for organizations. So it's it's really exciting. A lot of work, but but really exciting. Ricardo, this is really, is this the Brazilian DNA that I'm hearing all this growth and, and impact on the world that's coming across? <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, but it's, 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 it's really fascinating. We are driven by passion, yeah. Oh, I, yeah, I think both, it, both it's stories. the Latin, it's the Latin passion, you know. Yeah, so it is yeah, the Latin, <laughs> it's the Latin passion. You know, I mean, definitely the, the work on this book is only one example of, of really how excited I am always to collaborate with Ricardo. And you know, uh, all four of us have, have interacted, but uh, you've interacted also with Ricardo over the years. So that's fantastic. It's great to hear about the PMO Alliance story and also the PMU. I think it's fantastic energy. Uh, and we are very happy that you contributed to the book. Yeah, thank you. Um, and, and, and Edita, you know, I still remember the first time we crossed paths was in Dubai out of all places. Later, we're going to talk to America a little bit about, you know, his experiences in the Middle East too. Uh, so there's always unique energy that connects the network of practitioners when PMs really want to make a difference and put themselves out there to create an impact. I think there's always ways for that to happen. So, Dita, you heard Ricardo talk about, you know, how excited he was uh, or inspired by your contributions. You're in chapter one of the book. You're right there from uh, the get-go on the first pillar on uh, being a strategic uh, capability project management in the future. So, tell us a little bit about the future. Tell the participants a sneak peek into what you've contributed there in the article. Uh, find ways, if you can, to maybe pinpoint one or two things. 
to excite them about the, the future keyword? Well, at that time, I guess when I wrote, uh, when I was writing the article, it was, uh, as I said, just beginning, beginning of my project management United uh, journey. And it was uh, really challenging, you know, we were making the first steps and didn't know what, what is going to work, what is not. And then I, you know, I, I tried to, to go many, many times uh, to the future, uh, many, many years to the future and think uh, how ideally my, my project management picture would look like. So I still believe that the vision is uh, projectized, digitized and connected. And this is where I am mainly focusing in my article that uh, project, uh, projects, it's not only about monetary value anymore, you know, and uh, we always need to think about uh, social responsibility, what we leave for, fi for future generations. And of course, uh, it's, it's not easy and we need to have the right tools. Uh, we need to be empowered and uh, to find some time to, to work on the strategic program projects uh, right so therefore i think in the future uh, um, really technologies would be driving to make the difference uh, and uh, it would allow us uh, you know to avoid such repetitive uh, tasks as uh, i know and for myself it's uh, sometimes still challenging you know we need to update reports on timely basis and uh, I thought how it would be great if one day I wake up and say, let's say, Siri, update my uh, Jira with this and this status. And I, I can trust that the data will go there just, uh, just by saying. So I understand uh, we are not there yet. It's quite a long journey, but what we expect what we are experiencing talking with uh, different companies uh, with our partners and uh, project managers uh, who are really working like in construction sector in it they are showing the real examples and we are always so excited you know to show that there are such examples and uh, and future is now future is coming uh, just uh, you know, it takes time to to learn from uh, from the um, first mistakes and uh, adjust it for for global audience. So um, yeah, talking about the future uh, connected, what we call in in our terms, it's about power skills, and I think those would be a critical uh, skills required for future ready, future oriented project managers. Because, uh, you know, imagine if technologies will help us to avoid administrative tasks and make smarter decisions. So uh, uh, we need to be ready. We need to have those uh, decision making skills, negotiation skills, as well as uh, uh, think, uh, you know, how to measure the impact uh, our projects uh, are doing for the global pl planet. So uh, I really believe that uh, the future has started, bright future for project managers. And, uh, <clears throat> and this is what, uh, what I illustrate with some examples from my company and global companies. Very nice. And, uh, you know, it's all great points across the board. I love also the fact that you talked about the trust elements, uh, even trusting technology. I think that's kind of unique. We talk a lot about the trust currency into the future. And, I, you know, I, I skip usually asking both of you about your journey a little bit. I want to do that at the end instead uh, mm -hmm. and, and go right into the meet. So uh, okay. it's good to jump right into the meet with you. And you know, Ricardo, I'm sure we'll do the same with America next so that we can get some sense about the core of the article first. So thank you for that, though. Very good. Uh, uh, I have a, a question, Americo, more for you. Uh, you know, I, I, took, I took the book here. Uh, it's in my hand. And, and one of the things that amazed me is when you were talking about the ideal PMO model. And, and you said here, I'm quoting you, there are so many options 
that is almost possible to use the entire alphabet to represent PMO. Then you said agile management office, benefit management office, change management office, enterprise project management office, project <laughs> management center of excellence, project management office, strategic management office, value management office. I'm just quoting uh, 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 them here. Exactly. Uh, and and uh, I, have, I have one question. Tell us the secret now. What's the, the ideal one? Yeah, that, that's exactly the, the, the good question, you know, Ricardo. Uh, in fact, first of all, it's important to say that uh, everything that I present in, in this book is not exactly my ideas only. Actually, it's based on a, a research that started in 2010 uh, and it lasts seven years. And, and PMO Global Alliance started with that because we had a group of 122 PMO leaders and together we discussed all these ideas, all these things, you know, and we created a methodology named PMO Value Ring. So uh, the, the idea, everything started because uh, we had a big group of experienced PMO leaders and each one has a different type of PMO right and and we had good experiences we had failures and we when we try to understand why it happened you know so uh, what could be the best model of pmo or the ideal type of pmo we realize it that there were many proposals if we take the most important uh, books about pmos we will find 10 different proposals with different names, different numbers in terms of, of types of PMOs. So the question is, which one is the correct one, right? And that's the question we made to, to ourselves. And we realized that differently from project management, project management, program management, portfolio management, it's not quite difficult to find a consensus. And why? Because it's possible to find the best way of creating a budget or managing risks or maybe creating a WBS. So it's possible to find a, a reasonable consensus about it. But when we talk about PMOs, we can find many different types of PMOs or approaches. And some of them work sometimes a similar approach maybe will not work in another company. So when we take all these people together and say, hey, please try to find a consensus about, you know, the best PMO model, there is no consensus because PMOs are something different. It's a little, it's a much more complex phenomenon because we have different perspectives and each one in a specific way can be correct. And if you try to copy to your company, possibly it will not work because there are many, many variables that will influence your PMO, maturity, culture, uh, uh, sponsorship, many, many, many aspects. So when we talk about ideal models, this is the magic pill. Executives and many PMO leaders, they are just jumping from one solution to the next one because there is something fancy, you know, uh, the, the value management office, the, the tantric management office. I don't know. There will be many of them. I'm sure about that in the future. The point is when you take one because you believe that one is the best one, it's like if you take a box, open the box, and you believe that everything that is in that box was exactly made for you. And it doesn't make any sense. So the idea, the proposal of what we, I could say what we realized after our, our research is that you don't need to take one. You can open all these boxes, you know, the strategic man management office, the agile management office, open all these boxes. And instead of following what you you know, that list of things that you find in each one, you should take what really matter for you. Of course, it's not easy. There is a secret, I could say, you know, because it's not about what you think that it's important, but about what your customers really need. But anyway, this is the point. We don't need a model. If you believe that there is an ideal model, I could tell you that based on the experience of all this group, 
maybe this is the first step for failure. You don't need to believe a model. So you need to create your own model. That, that's the point, you know? And I believe this is the, the most important, the, the most key aspect of what I presented in our article. I have, uh, I have an analogy that I, I, I really love to say is the Swiss army knife. You know that you take the best pieces to the best use and, and there is no easy solution. Oh, we would love, we would love really to have one solution that fits always yeah. solve all of our yeah. problems. But, but in reality, it, it's, it's really, it, it's absolutely different and we need just to prepare for that and this uh, drives me to a, a question for you Evita also in your in your uh, in your uh, article uh, I'm, I'm quoting you here you said that the future vision of project management is not a, an utopia or an illusion uh, and I want you to tell us uh, how do we plan how do you plan for the future you know and and why i'm asking you this because honestly i wake up in the morning every day with a surprise you know it's oh now it's metaverse now it's nft now it's no now it's nothing that no no it's all different it's so every single day there is a new management practice there is something that people are coming up so how do we plan? What is your what are your insights on that piece of planning ourselves to prepare for that? Uh, well, uh, if we talk about uh, about ourselves, I guess uh, uh, my my advice would be uh, uh, based on the words I words and presentation I heard from. Uh, from also well-known uh, author Jack Dugal, uh, who once did a presentation about, about planning. And, and he said magic words, you know. He said uh, that there is no such thing like plan. Uh, plans cannot uh, exist in our VUCA world, but every one of us needs to do planning and keep it adjusting you know it's like a dancing through this VUCA world so always when it comes to my personal uh, uh, piece of advice i i really do like that i i always feel uh, more uh, confident you know when i have uh, uh, done some planning and i see what is coming but of course uh, we don't know what we don't know and uh, and things happen but uh, if we talk about uh, future project management right and how to be ready for the future uh, i am still believer that uh, everything uh, should start from strategic level and uh, you know as uh, uh, i guess uh, we cannot imagine very mature organization without mature project managers inside and uh, and perhaps sustainable corporates wouldn't, uh, uh, sustainable project managers wouldn't uh, be in organizations that uh, doesn't believe in sustainability and uh, doesn't try to make some uh, environmental, social or governance uh, positive impact. So uh, therefore, uh, you know, I was watching what global companies are doing, how they are preparing for the future. And uh, my really eye-opening experience was uh, 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 based on partnerships uh, uh, in uh, Bridge Conference. Uh, for example, I guess two, two or three uh, Fin, FinOps companies uh, joined us and they were really welcome, uh, you know, to share their their ideas. And uh, it became actually long lasting partnerships between them because uh, every time we have some uh, shared uh, events, uh, you know, and uh, they uh, they are glad to to share their project manager's journey. And, you know, I really believe that uh, when we move from this traditional project management to more modern, uh, uh, modern project management and then sustainability on the very, very top, uh, project managers uh, 
you have a great chance uh, to to follow the whole career ladder and there are great examples when let's say project manager becomes sustainability leader or change manager so we cannot avoid the fact that all of us should start from ourselves and uh, be flexible uh, be ready for whatever is coming and of course it requires knowledge and learning every day you know to absorb new skills and see what's coming and i guess only then project manager can choose the best way of working is it waterfall is it lean or agile uh you know and adopt those practices uh, to really complex projects so it's a journey for for each of us uh, for for person for every person and for project manager but uh, yeah i think uh, we just should keep learning absorbing and uh, following what are realities and be those forward looking personalities who you know can always find a plan b in in every situation absolutely probably oh oh now now i need to step to you because this question about the future we can go absolutely endless we can speak for our you you just said about planning and i say you know even for the future i have my own planning here look and i do this for many years that this is you know it's it's something that is inside my mind but thank you oh ball to you yeah no absolutely that's very interesting so ricardo you know I'm wondering what's going in the back of the mind of some of our participants, you know, between, uh, you know, America talking about, hey, there's no magical answer. And then you talk, you hear Edita talk about, you got to learn how to dance. Uh, and so uh, it sounds like the world is adaptability on steroids. So America, I mean, how do I even set expectations then of the PMO? Like, how can I anchor something down? Uh, expectations for a program and a project manager are so yeah. fundamentally important we can really get off track and lose the opportunity to succeed both individually and in our programs and projects so how do you do it what's or how how does the community think is the best way to do that yeah that, that's a great question all uh, in, in fact uh, it's easy to understand the concept of expectation so we want to know what people expect from us and we will deliver what they expect it looks very simple but it, it's not. Uh, and there are some reasons for that. The first reason is because there is a big shift in terms of focus. Uh, PMOs are under transformation. And this transformation is a big shift because for many years, PMOs had a great focus on the technique. So methodologies, tools, best practices, you know, that's what all PMOs really love. But in the last few years, we see, especially with those most successful PMOs, I see that at, at our competitors at the PMO Global Awards, for example, it's the, the largest awards for PMOs in the world today. And we see that the most successful PMOs, they are shifting their focus from the technical side to the people. So it means that we are they, they are trying to understand people, understand what their customers really need. And of course, best practices, tools, methodologies, everything will be important. But this is not the real reason of the existence of a PMO, right? They are just yeah. the, the mean, the, the way that we will get the results that are expected. And the most important point when we talk about expectations is it because... As I said, it looks easy because I could say, okay, uh, director, please tell me what you want, right? Would you like a methodology? Would you like some tool? Would you like some training? But the problem is that's not their language. They don't yeah. care. They don't care about methodologies. They don't care about tools. They don't care about training. What they want is result. What they yeah. want is something that will heal their pain, you know what I mean? So this translation between these two languages, you know, the technical language that most of the PMOs speak and the results-based language that is the real language of our customers, executives, functional managers, even project managers when they are not part of the PMO, 
we need to speak their language. We need to understand their pains. And based on this, that's when we will act to generate functions, you know, activities, all this stuff that will be useful. So yeah. it's easy to think that a Ferrari is something really nice and beautiful and everyone needs one. I, I think I need one, uh, of course, but, but what, I, what I'm, I'm, I'm saying is that there will be many companies that they are walking on foot. If you give them a bike, it's enough at this moment, Perfect. you know? And, and that's the spirit because we, ne we need to heal the pains that exist now. Otherwise, we cannot generate perception of value. They will not yeah. recognize what we are doing. So we have to heal the pains and see it for the future. Because in the future, these customers will have different pains. And we have to be there, prepared yeah. to, 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 to support them. That's a great point. And it's a nice segue into just a small follow-up question about the value aspect as well, right? So really what's really good about your remarks, America, is that you're talking about at the end of the day, finding a, a clear view. When we talk about expectations, you're trying to really set a clear view of what success could look like, depending on the setting and the culture and the maturity and those nice points you raised. So I, you understand in, in the book also, you know, when we look at that example from the uh, PMO case in the Middle East, you, you actually managed to map that to this last point of value. Can you tell us how did that work? Why was that so unique? Because everyone talks about value uh, and we do want to achieve the benefits and the outcomes, obviously, so that PMOs mm -hmm. play that strategic mm -hmm. role. And I think you and Edith actually are tied almost in this point of strategy, right? Because strategy drives to a great extent seems the achievement of value. So go yeah. for it. Yeah, it's true. Uh, in fact, that specific PMO, they, they had a very interesting experience because they were very focused on maturity. And maturity means doing very well what you are doing. Right. But when we talk about expectations, we are talking about alignment and maturity without alignment possibly is a waste of money. Right. So when I say alignment means, OK, we are providing you the, 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 the medicine, the right, the best medicine for your real pain. Right. If you don't have diabetes, I don't need to give you a great uh, medicine for diabetes, you know what I mean? So this is the point. We need to be like doctors. We need to understand them and provide the best medicines they, they, they could have. But the point is alignment and maturity are different. And this PMO, they realize that because they were investing a lot of time, a lot of money in becoming the best in terms of maturity, but without a clear understanding about what were the real needs and alignment without maturity is a, a sentence of, of death in the medium long term yeah yeah i know that's wonderful and it's it's a it's a continuous battle i don't think it's a straight line right you almost have to go through the exactly. agony and the tension it's almost like a needle that you're trying to really fit exactly yeah. right there. Uh -huh. yeah that's excellent yeah let's see ricardo what do you think yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, that's perfect. I'm receiving already some questions yeah. here, but I, I want just to go to my, uh, my, my last question before we take some of the questions of the audience. But, uh, you know, everything comes with a challenge, right? It, it's not because we always uh, present things, I would say, uh, um, without many times recognizing that it's, it's a nightmare. And you pointed very well, uh, on, on the PMO and this ideal PMO. So if you can tell us, uh, not only you, America, but Edita also, about a key PMO and project challenges uh, that you have faced and learned from. So things that, you know, oops, I took the wrong path. I need just to go back and and fix can you can you share some sometimes stuff? sometimes that's the best learning so let's see maybe oh, absolutely. First. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely Edita. well i think uh, my project challenge is uh, more related uh, to uh, yeah also to project management united uh, when we 
needed to, to change uh, vendor in, in, in a matter of days before the conference. So it's uh, perhaps uh, again about uh, about uh, evaluation. What are your quality criteria? And uh, and for this particular project, we really knew that uh, that we want to, you know, to to provide for our audience one hundred percent value. Oh, not only content matters, but also you know how how. Uh, it will look like and uh, and what uh, what end result we will bring. So um, you know sometimes you need to change you need to make changes uh, overnight. And uh, when I am really lucky that I have uh, uh, this shared partnership and we really can make shared decisions right to uh, to compare opinions. And I think this is. Uh, uh, this usually helps to overcome even the biggest challenges to find new new vendors to find uh, uh, support uh, even in the very last uh, minutes uh, you know releasing this uh, the projects like this um, with respect to my practical perspective I am also work uh, uh, for many years as a T project manager. So, uh, um, you know, there are even more complex challenges related uh, with uh, new technologies. And let's say uh, once we needed to stop our pilot project only because uh, uh, data acquisition techniques was uh, not very well evaluated and, uh, you know, we we just decided that we cannot manage uh, our project sponsors expectations and it's taking too long to show that we can bring the value really what america mentioned in in his uh, pmo examples so i think um, these uh, these are my main lessons uh, and uh, and uh, perhaps uh, in the future i i wish just to uh, to be able, you know, to stop sooner uh, when you see that your project is, uh, you know, something is failing, uh, you need to go back, uh, reconsider and, uh, and uh, find some uh, more creative solutions. So usually we use such. There is, there is a quote, there is a quote that I never forget. Uh, I read for the first time in the Elianu Goldrat book uh, uh the goal and 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 he mentioned that the first thing you need to do when you are inside a hole is, is stop digging you know so uh, uh, you know because it, it it's tough it's tough to go back so now americo your turn now well uh in fact ricardo i've been working as a consultant for more than 20 years and, and consultants are supposed to have the answers Right. So one thing that changed my life in the last five years after I started to, to work at BMO Global Alliance is that I realized that the power of a community. And when I say that, I'm not saying that a community is useful because you can benchmark and just copy solutions that look successful. No, it doesn't work in the project management field, in the PMO field. But what make you successful is your ability to be inspired by this, by this, you know, uh, a multitude of, of different experiences. If you can be inspired instead of believing that there is a, a right one, you will be able to deal with flexibility and adaptability. You will be able to deal with the real challenges that will come ahead. You know, and that's the big point. So a lesson learned for, for me is that I, I don't need to have all the answers, actually. What I have to do is to keep my mind open to understand what, you know, is happening around me and take these experiences to create solutions that make sense in specific scenarios and in specific situations. This is the real, the real ability that I believe that will be expected from PMO leaders in the future. You don't need to 
just copy or follow, um, you know, magic recipes. It doesn't work. We need to create what we what, what is really needed at our companies and uh, at our uh, uh, specific situations. That 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 I believe uh, it was a, a great experience in the in the last few years. Wonderful. Look, I have I have a couple of questions here, and I know what time is running because we said we should finish and try. So I, I will just uh, ask you to briefly, uh, and and both of them are are from PMO. So I will ask you uh, uh, to to take them, uh, Americo. So the first one uh, is this one. Um, it's from starting projecting now. If every organization should develop its own PMO model. Why there are so many models being sold coating in the market? Yeah, first of all, because it's easy to sell pre-established models, right? If you take most of the books, you will see that they were uh, written by consultants. And of course, they want to sell, you know, their, their, their solutions. But I'm not saying that it's bad. No, 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 absolutely. All of them are valuable. The point is, you don't need to take one of them and believe that's your solution. It would be a great coincidence. You know why? I usually, I usually say that uh, the PMO is like an elephant, right? And, and you are blindfolded around the elephant. If you touch the animal in front of you, if you are in the tail, you will say that it's like a, a, a worm. If you are in the uh, close to the ear, you say that looks like a big fish. If you are in the trunk, you say that it's a big snake. Which one is the correct one? Everyone in their perspective, you know what I'm saying? That's exactly the idea of all these models that we see, all of them can be useful. If you can be inspired by them to create your own model. So if your PMO at the end of the day, it's not an elephant, it's a, you know, it, it, it has a, a panda head, and the, the body of a penguin, it's a panda penguin PMO. It's okay, why not? If it, that's what you really need. So that's the answer for this question, okay. I believe. And, I, and the second question is from uh, my dear friend, Faha, that I cannot miss because Faha is, is a legend in the project management space. And, 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 he, and he put, a, I would say a quite provocative uh, question. Uh, for you talking about corporate ideology and this. And his question is, uh, is uh, uh, he's, oh, sorry, his comment is this. Uh, it's his comment. And I want to hear your comment on his comment. Uh, yeah. PMOs are a menace to corporate <laughs> ideology. They will be terminated like the Knights of Templar. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, Fah what's your take on that? Yeah, Fah 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 in fact, Faha is also... How can I say he's part of many of these things that I'm 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 talking about today yeah. because he he has uh, worked with with us many different times. Many of these points were inspired by by some of his ideas. So he's a, a great friend and, and and professional. And and in fact, there are many prophecies about the end of the PMOs. Right? I I I don't believe in them, and I. And I and I and I put my my whole career in risk, right? Because at risk, because I, I really don't believe that it will happen, just because of one reason, because PMOs are not are not anything different from centralization of some specific functions. That if you made him made them in a centralized way, you be more effect effective. You can get better results, more competence. So we, we see that not only in the project field, but also uh, acquisitions, IT. 40 years ago, 30 years ago, these areas were not centralized like they are today. And that's exactly the same approach. The point is not about centralizing or not, because there is no other organizational model better than this one until now. So the point is what you will centralize at your company. What makes sense to you? And that's, you know, the questions that we've, we've discussed it today, I believe. So the PMOs will be there in the future, maybe with another name, I don't know, but 
centralization. Uh, we have already we have already a list here of options, right? We exactly, can, can, exactly. Yeah. It's a yeah. menu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but look, uh, 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 Faha also wrote this. It's it's on the same topic, but it's saying a uh, 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 menace to the power structure. And and I, I understand Faha your your point. Let me just step in uh, here quickly. I, I understand your point, and it's absolutely valid. Uh, because there is a change management component on everything. On everything, you need to manage change because those who are in, in, in holding the power, uh, they struggle to give up the power. So it's every true. time you say, no, let's do it a little bit different, uh, people, people tend to avoid and they tend. And, and the PMO is this. And, and I, I saw also uh, so many different types of, of project offices. Uh, some of them more centralized, some of them very less centralized, uh, some of them more on the control piece, some of them more on the educational piece. And, and there is no bad or good. There is just the wrong fit and the right fit. And exactly. I, I think that this is this is what matters. Uh, look, I, I want now, now we are uh, approaching I would say the end, okay? Uh, and I would love to hear from each of you uh, just your your final thoughts and your final remarks uh, uh, on on this and what kind of advice for those. We have people attending this. I, uh, you know, we highlighted some. We have people from everywhere, from Lebanon, Brazil, Argentina, India. Uh, what would be uh, your piece of advice? And I will start with Edita. Okay, and, and if you can start sharing with us. Well, so just to, to wrap it up, uh, I first of all, thanks uh, once again for this invitation to share. And uh, I really welcome everyone to read the book because I really enjoyed, uh, you know, how you structure the book and I really find this alignment with the, you know, our projectized, digitized, connected journey in project management future. So really enjoyed that one. And uh, I guess uh, my, uh, uh, my advice or recommendation is uh, for everyone, um, changes are hard, but uh, they are inevitable. So uh, for each uh, project manager for each professional i would uh, you know wish to uh, to be the change agent agent uh, this change leader of your project and uh, think how you can find uh, you know those connections uh, between strategic partners because only together we are you know stronger power and so when we look at the multiple global examples, companies start becoming uh, strategic uh, partners because uh, we think about our planet, how to save it, how to, how to uh, achieve better efficiency in our projects. And only this will create long lasting values and uh, will help us to proceed and uh, bring our profession to a new level. Thank you. Wonderful. Americo. Okay. So uh, I'd like to talk about what makes a successful PMO leader. Uh, when we talk about PMO trends, we see many technical aspects. For example, AI, uh, and that data analytics, uh, remote work, all of them are important, but they are not what really justify a PMO. You need to generate perception of value. So if we talk about competences for the next generation PMO leader, I would suggest that you could study things like customer service, customer experience, uh, service, a, a marketing of services. The PMO is a service provider. And what will make you a successful PMO leader is your ability to manage how you are providing services to your customers. If you are agile, if you use AI, if you are you know, buying this or that uh, solution for a specific vendor, it's just a detail. Actually, it's the, 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 the medicine. You need to understand the real pains. And for that, you need to understand your customer the best way possible. Fantastic. 
Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Americo. Uh, my dear, oh, it's your turn now, my friend. Uh, these guys are amazing, Ricardo, right? I mean, I, I want to say we learn about panda and penguins and dancing, but there's a lot more that we learned about, right? So, <laughs> oh, uh, no, in, in, in all seriousness, and thanks also, Dita, for the compliment about the structure of the book. I mean, you contributed to Pillar 1, America contributed to Pillar 9 for the PMO disruptions. Uh, there's a ton of learning that I learned and I took notes here above and beyond even the contribution. So, you know, whether it comes to, I, I wrote lots of points here. So first of all, there's a thread between this and the session we had with CETA uh, on the topic of VUCA and on the topic of sustainability. So I'm very appreciative that you brought that in the mix. But also, I really took a note of the design for fit that you were talking about very much in detail, America. That's really what it takes. We cannot really almost hand off the keys and say, hey, come help me when I'm helpless and I really don't know exactly what I'm trying to accomplish with project management or PMO and so forth. So I think that's really a great, hopefully, takeaway and learning and reminder for us. But then, you know, both of you hit this nail on the head and speaking the right language as well. It's very, very important. I mean, you did allude to what this last comment about the learning around the customer and so forth, which is great, but ultimately you're really learning the language of your audience here, the, the folks you want to affect, I think came loud and clear. This session, we could have called it also change management, to be honest, because you guys really did a wonderful job in connecting the dots with that. So thank you so much for taking us up on being here because it's, uh, and contributing naturally to this uh, to this work that Ricardo and I and Dr. Kirsten are very proud of. Thank you, thank you, my dear all. So look, uh, first, uh, it, it's a pleasure to be with you, Edita, and, and Americo. You know, uh, we are friends, you know, on the project management uh, arena for, for America. I know uh, you for many, many, many oh. years, and we, we <laughs> crossed our paths in so many different places. So it's, and, and the work you were doing uh, at, uh, at the, the Global Alliance, it's, it's incredible. And, you know, I already told you, you that many times. And, and the idea of all these webinars is to bring uh, to you uh, this content, these discussions, these different perspectives. So yesterday we were talking about, uh, about project management in the largest uh, information service organization for air transport industry. You know, they take care of 90% of every time you check your bag, you do your check-in, you get in the plane, you in some ways are connected to them. Uh, and then uh, on the first one, we spoke with uh, 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 Juliana about Ambev, one of the largest brew companies shifting completely to build hospitals and uh, alcohol septic uh, for, uh, for the COVID patients. Uh, and, and during the mm -hmm. pandemic. So, and, and this is exactly the intent. And the intent of the book was, was this. Uh, I, I want just to highlight uh, two things. The first one is that you can access rvarg.as RVA, next gen to see all the past because we are storing them on YouTube. So if you want to watch uh, these later, you can watch on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, and all of them. And also to see the agenda, because, for example, tomorrow we'll talk about uh, with Hospital Albert Einstein, one of the leading hosp hospitals in Latin America, and how they approach the surge of COVID cases as a hospital, you know, in the epicenter of, of the, the pandemic. And next week, we'll have much, much more to share with you. And one second thing is that... Um, uh, while I uh, agree, we, we are doing this as authors, okay? But while I decided to support and provide this 20% discount on Wiley.com uh, for those who want to, to buy the book. So this is not, uh, we are just the authors, okay? People think that the author is the owner of the book. It's not the case, okay? But uh, just for you to, to know that. And I cannot finish uh, without... Uh, uh, I know that uh, I'm just trying to find here. Oh, yes. On this final message uh, from Faha to you, uh, Americo. To you, America. And I'm sure that Faha is sending this also. Is that, is that like a peace offering after he attacked all of you? <laughs> yes, yes, no, yes. No, no. No, he's, he, he, is, he is an incredible, 
uh, human being. Okay, yeah, absolutely incredible and a fantastic friend. And I'm very happy. Uh, uh, you know, when when I see him uh, presenting uh, coming, uh, I know it will be a, always a provocative question. Uh, but look, Edita, thank you very very much. Uh, I'll say tune, my friend. It's incredible to be with you, okay, on this awesome. series. Americo, thank you for your contribution, you. okay? I hope you all enjoyed this, this session and see you next time. Thank you very much, Americo, Edita, Rica, uh, oh, okay, and I was reading the notes here. Okay, take care, bye-bye, see you. Bye-bye, bye-bye.